morning and welcome to the Lord's house in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we continue in the season of Lent, studying the re readings and the sermon for today, we discover that we have a God, we have a Savior who is totally committed, totally devoted to you and me so that we might enjoy all that he has wrought for us. We will follow the order of service, uh, setting two from our blue hymnals with a few adjustments for the Lenten season. And we begin with our first hymn, 419, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle. Now, as you're comfortable and able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross, and freed from death, 
by his resurrect, freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Eternal God and Father, help us to remember Jesus, who obeyed your will and bore the cross for our salvation, that through his anguish, pain, and death, we may receive the forgiveness of sins, victory over the grave, and finally inherit eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. congregation may be seated and I invite the children of the congregation forward for the children's message. If we have any brave souls today. <laughs> Everybody stay in put? Okay. <laughs> That's all right. That is okay. We begin then by our looking at the scriptures under the theme of total commitment, not ours, mind you, but that of the Lord God, that of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we first uh, read the comforting words of Isaiah chapter 43 as we walk through the fires of trouble and as we walk through the floods of grief that so mark our lives, the Lord. The Savior God is with us. Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says. The Lord who created you, O Jacob. The Lord who formed you, O Israel. Do not be afraid, because I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you cross through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. 
and the flame will not set you on fire. Because I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba to exchange for you. Because you are my precious, you are precious and honored in my eyes, and I myself love you. I will give people in exchange for you, and peoples in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, because I am with you. From the east I will bring your offspring, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them back, and to the south, do not hold them. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, everyone I created for my glory, everyone I formed, yes, everyone I have made. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 121, and we speak the words responsively. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. My help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot stumble. Yes, he who watches over Israel will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The sun will not strike you by day. The Lord will watch to keep you from all harm. The Lord will watch over your going and your coming. We now go to our second lesson from the scriptures which will also be the basis for our sermon today. We have a brother in our Savior who, according to his human nature, felt everything that we feel and knew the cost, knew the cost of what it would be to save us. And because he is our Savior, because he succeeded, he is the source of our salvation. Hebrews chapter 5. In the days of his flesh, he offered prayers and pleas with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. After he was brought to his goal, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing the gospel acclamation for the Lenten season. Continuing in God's word with our gospel lesson from the gospel of John, chapter 12. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew came with Philip and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
Amen, amen, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it continues to be one kernel. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Anyone who loves his life destroys it. And the one who hates his life in this world will hold on to it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, this is the reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it thundered. Others said an angel talked to him. Jesus answered, this voice was not for my sake, but for yours. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be thrown out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate what kind of death he was going to die. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated now as we sing our next hymn, In the Hour of Trial, 406.
I look to the mountains. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Dear friends, we consider the second lesson from Hebrews chapter 5. Dear friends in Christ, husbands and wives are totally devoted to one another. Fathers and mothers are totally devoted to their children. A faithful employee is totally devoted to their work. A faithful employer is totally devoted to providing for workers, to improving the business. Neighbors are totally devoted to one another. If you need anything, cup of sugar, power tools, lawnmower, anything at all, just ask. Oh, how we wish, how we wish it were true most, if not all of the time. Spouses fight. Children and parents vie for control of the household, it would seem. Employers and employees don't always get along with one another. Neighbors can regard each other as nuisances. Any relationship we share with another person is unfortunately in this world far from perfect. Still, as human beings, we delight to have someone totally devoted to us, to love us, to care for us, to provide for us, and to protect us. And the writer to the Hebrews reminds us that there is such a person. Jesus is totally devoted to you. One of the main themes of the letter to the Hebrews is the superiority of Christ to that of the Old Testament practices, that Jesus was the fulfillment of all those Old Testament practices. He is the great high priest. With that in mind, we read something interesting. In the days of his flesh, he offered prayers and pleas with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Here we have a unique glimpse of what it means that Jesus is, as we confess, true God and true man in one person. As true God, there was no need for Jesus to offer prayers, pleas, and loud cries. However, when he was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary into this world, he humbled himself. He set aside the full use of his divine power and glory to share in our human flesh. So, truly human, he offered up prayers, pleas, and loud cries to the one who was able to to save him from death, his heavenly father. Stop for a moment and think. Think of all the times that scripture says Jesus went to a solitary place by himself to pray. Think of all the things that he might have asked for from his heavenly father. More specifically, these words from Hebrews draw us to the garden of Gethsemane. We see there his cries and pleas. As Jesus continued on in the garden, scripture says his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. And again, we know that Jesus is true God. We know that Jesus knew what lay ahead of him, what the plan of salvation was, and what was required of him. He said it himself. 
The Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law, be killed, and on the third day, rise again. Nothing was going to keep him from that. He turned his face, hard and as sharp as flint, toward Jerusalem, and what awaited him there. However, that that doesn't mean that he didn't feel things like loneliness, fear, and sadness. After all, Jesus is truly human. This can be hard for us to comprehend, but let me ask you a simple question. As a human being, do you like pain? When you accidentally hit your thumb with the hammer, when you get cut by thorns and thistles in your garden, when you trip and fall, do you like the pain that follows? How about when you can see the pain coming? When you know you've got to go through weeks and weeks of physical therapy to get your strength back after surgery? When you know you have to endure weeks of radiation and chemotherapy to eradicate the cancer that is inside of you, do you enjoy it? No. It's human nature to recoil and not go through pain if we can avoid it. And again, Jesus is truly human. So when he says things like in our gospel lesson, now my soul is troubled, or at Gethsemane, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, even to the point of death, he means it. And so Jesus prayed, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And the writer to the Hebrews says he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. God heard his son's prayer. And God answered his son's prayer. The cup of suffering would not pass from Jesus' lips. But Jesus would be given the strength to endure as he reverently, obediently submitted to God's will, even as it meant death, even death on a cross. Not what I will, but what you will. That's more than you and I have done. In our sinfulness, we struggle to reverently submit to God's will. Usually, we fight against God's will. God's will is for you and me to put him above everything else, to make him the top priority. God's will for you and me is to be the loving spouse, the obedient child, the fair employer, the hard-working employee, the caring neighbor. And just exactly how often do we do that? Not as often as we should. Not perfectly, which is the minimum standard. Another characteristic of our sinful struggle against God and his will is to accuse God. Accuse God of not giving us what we want or not meeting our expectations for life. I didn't ask for this chronic illness. I didn't anticipate having financial difficulty or family issues at this point in my life. Or maybe it's more when trouble strikes and our heart impatiently uh, impatiently wants God to act now instead of his own good time. Maybe you're like the Apostle Paul, who was given a thorn in the flesh. Remember how Paul thought 
how much better he could be in service to the Lord if only this thorn was taken away. Doesn't God know? Doesn't God understand? Doesn't God love me? Yes, he does love you. How do you know? You know because Jesus is totally devoted to you. Jesus, the Son of God, understands things like pain and anguish and suffering to agree no one no one else ever could. Jesus, true God and true man, obediently submitted to that suffering so that you could know you have a God who loves you, cares for you, and does what is best for you. He did it all from start to finish. He obeyed perfectly. He even prayed perfectly so that you could be clothed perfectly in the robes of his righteousness. That was the goal, and that goal was reached, which for us means something wonderful. The writer to the Hebrews says, after he was brought to his goal, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. Jesus is the source of forgiveness that you need. He is the source of eternal life, which you now look forward to with a glad heart. But what about that last phrase? For everyone who obeys him. What does that mean? You and I know when it comes to obeying the commands of the triune God that we fall helplessly and hopelessly short. The law of God says do and do not. And your sinful nature and mine, with all the hostility that it can muster, says to God, no way. However, this is not the obedience, not the type of obedience we are talking about. This obedience is gospel-oriented, which means this obedience springs from faith. Jesus explained it this way after he fed the multitudes with five loaves and two fish. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Believing that Jesus reached the goal, trusting that Jesus lived perfectly, prayed perfectly, and suffered obediently for you so you could know him as the source of eternal salvation, that is the faith that resides in your heart. This faith in your heart looks at the wonderful words we read from Isaiah chapter 43 and expresses confidently, yes, the Lord made me, the Lord redeemed me, I am his. I can walk through the fires of trial and the floods of grief and he is always with me. This faith trusts like Job. Even in the midst of trouble, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be blessed. It leans on God's grace amidst thorns of any kind. As the Apostle Paul was told, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in weakness. This faith in your heart gladly says, I can glorify God just like my Savior did. I can be totally devoted to all of the people in all of the callings that God has put into my life. 
faithful spouse, faithful parent, child, student, worker, employer, employee, neighbor, etc. The list goes on and on. Life in a sinful world is hard, and it will continue to be so. You will not always know what is coming, and even if you do, you will not always understand why. There will be sickness. There will be pain. There will be sorrow that you must go through. There will be pressures not to give your very best. There will be times when you struggle with doubt. There may even be times when you are tempted to give up the good fight of faith. When these things happen, dear friends, don't forget. Don't forget your endless source of help, comfort, strength, resolve, calm, security. I could go on and on and on forever. For as long as the laundry, laundry list of your anxieties, worries, and tragedies is in your life, your Savior has and is the remedy for every single one. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus now and always, for he is totally devoted to you. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith with one voice, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me now in the responsive prayer of the church. You have called us by name. You created us for your glory. You formed and made us. You have told us not to be afraid, for you are with us. Open our ears when we hear all your gracious promises. Give us confidence in your presence and in your commitment to care. Prepare us to give reason for the hope we have. Teach us to know Jesus so that we can also glorify your name through our words and actions and help others to see him. Your son Jesus knew suffering, and he offered up prayers and petitions to you, Father. Strengthen those who suffer injustice, who are being treated badly by others, falsely accused, or suffer for no reason of their own. You heard the cries of your son and raised him from death. Hear our prayers for those who struggle with pain or sickness, and those who carry the burdens of life with troubled hearts. Give relief and rest to your people in your time. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
Almighty God, your dear Son did not ascend to joy until he first suffered pain and did not enter into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it as the true way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. The congregation may be seated as our offering is received, and as our offering is received, we sing the first four verses of Christ, the life of all the living.
Morning. Morning. Yep. Yeah. Good morning. Morning, Gary. You feel great, I bet. 